Well, hey there, it's Liz Rohr from Real World NP, and you are watching the Real World NP YouTube channel. We make weekly episodes to help save you time, frustration, and help you take the best care of your patients. Hello, so we are going to talk today about red flags of headaches. So headaches are a doozy of a chief complaint because there's such a broad differential. Like so many of the topics I've talked about in episodes so far, uh, headaches are really a tricky one. So the reason I wanna focus on red flags in this episode is because the way that we get to that confident place of like, you know what? this is what I think this headache is from, here are the differentials, I'm pretty confident going forward. The way that we get there is it's just a gradual process, like most of the really tricky chief complaints. We have to start with the kind of basics, the old cart, onset location, duration, all of those history questions. And then understanding the red flags of headaches keeps us safe and then as we build out our knowledge, we can be like, oh, okay. So like spontaneous, um, you know, uh, intracranial hypotension. I know all about that, right? Like, come on, no, we're gonna learn about that as we go, right? And so the red flags are like those kind of anchoring pieces of like, okay, maybe I don't know all the things about spontaneous uh, intracranial hypotension, right? But like, you know what, we're gonna, we're just gonna watch out for it, right? So anyway, in the, I wanna talk about some red flags. So specifically, what I wanna focus on is an acronym, which you may or may not be familiar with. Uh, it's called, it's had a lot of names, but it's like the SNOOP acronym. So SNOOP 10, I think is the most updated one. And I wanna walk through that and kind of give some examples of context. So the, so SNOOP, right? S is the first one. So the first thing you wanna watch out for when it comes to a headache is, do they have any systemic symptoms? Do they have other things going on in their body, right? Even if you aren't from, you know what, you're not like, like listing off all of those differentials, right? Is there anything systemic going on? Do they have a fever or chills, most specifically, right? Do they have a rash? Do they have like other things going on? And that can be tied into things like meningitis, for example. So first things first, start with the S. I got my little notes over here. Um, there's two ends. The first most important end, the kind of like, these are some hopefully like helpful hack pathways that you can be like, at least even if I don't know all of the differentials, I know these red flags, right? The next one is neurologic symptoms, neurologic deficits. So whenever I was, I was a new grad, and even to this day, when I have a patient with a headache and I'm not quite sure what to do with them, the first question is, how is their neuro exam? If I didn't present that information to the person already. So neurologic exam is gonna be so, so important. Anybody with a headache, we really wanna be mindful of their neurologic status. Do they have any focal deficits, quote unquote. The next one is a history of neoplasm. So we wanna be mindful of, do they have a history of cancer? Could this be a brain tumor? And I wanna pause there and say that pretty much every patient that comes in is worried about something that severe. It's our job to be worried about it. It is not a common reason, but it is an important history question to ask in the context of a person with a headache. Um, so with O's, there's two O's, so SNOOP. So two N's, two O's. So one of them is older age, which older is subjective, right? But basically it's referring to any patient over the age of 50. And a new onset of a headache over the age of 50 just has another level, another layer of differentials that could be more severe. And so it's just one piece to keep in mind with a red flag. Somebody who is the age of 50 or older with a headache does not necessarily mean that this is a red flag, they need urgent imaging, you have to send them to the ED. It's just one piece of information to keep in mind. Um, o, the other O is really important. So, well, these are all important, obviously, but <laughs> maybe I'll keep saying they're all important, I don't know. Um, so this second O though has to do with onset. So abrupt onset is very concerning with a headache. So that's what you've probably learned about or maybe even seen in real life so far of a thunderclap headache. So something that happened immediately, quick onset, especially in the context of somebody who was like exercising or doing some sort of exertion and then had this sudden severe onset of a headache. That could be some sort of vascular condition. So it's really important to be mindful of the abrupt onset uh, patients.
Okay, so the rest of them are P's. There are 10 P's. There used to be a couple of P's and it feels like they just keep adding them, but it's nice at least that they're the same letter, right? So um, pattern change or um, a new recent new onset. So this is, again, this, this in and of itself is not necessarily a, an emergency. It's just a helpful context of like, when you're talking to somebody who has a headache, is this, is this a headache that you had before? Do you have headaches like this? Or is this drastically different than what you've had before? Because when there is a changing pattern, especially if it's progressive, that is more concerning for something more organically dangerous. Uh, positional headache. <laughs> so this one, I feel like I would get this when I was a new grad, I would present my case and then the, my colleague would be like, well, was it positional? Like, what are you talking about? So um, this has started referring to somebody who's laying flat or standing up. It's worse when they stand up or, and then better when they're laying flat is typically the scenario that we're talking about. And this has to do with the, the zebra that I mentioned of spontaneous intracranial hypotension or CSF leak or some sort of more um, concerning acute process. So even if you're not comfortable with all the differentials of like what positional could mean, um, just keeping that in mind as part of your history taking. The other context I want to make uh, that I want to set around that, and I'm going to be making another video about migraines specifically. It's not necessarily that like the movement around is troublesome because there are patients who have migraines, for example, and exertion makes it worse because they just, it's just a throbbing headache that if they're going for a walk, it's going to make it worse. So that's not necessarily what I mean by positional or what's meant by positional. It has to do with position changes. There's a distinct difference between the position change that causes some sort of difference in their symptoms. Uh, let's go for another P. So this is precipitated by sneezing, coughing, or exercise. I've already kind of mentioned this already, but um, when you have somebody who has a very sudden onset, especially in the context of that sort of exertional episode, that could be a vascular cause. Another P, papilledema. So this is a very challenging one uh, where pretty much anybody who has a headache, you're going to do a focal neuro exam, full head to toe, probably, in terms of your neurologic exam that you're gonna be focused on. Papilledema is important to, to take a look at the intracranial pressure and all that. It is a very challenging exam to master, so just do your very best to keep on practicing and always ask for help if you need it. Uh, another P, progressive history um, or atypical presentations. I've, it's sort of similar to what I've already said, but the context of people is that they, um, like most of the time patients who have headaches can tell you what their history is versus if this is like a brand new, they've never had this type of headache before, definitely tread cautiously. Pregnancy, 100%. Anytime I have a patient who is pregnant with a headache, I'm getting somebody else involved because there are more other things to be considered for a patient who is pregnant and it could be a lot more serious. Post-traumatic onset, another P. So if somebody has some sort of head injury or some sort of trauma and then they get the severe headache, that is much more concerning. Painful eye. If somebody has a painful eye, it could be more uh, associated with like another sort of underlying condition. So two more Ps. So pathology of the immune system. So if somebody has something like HIV or something underlying with their immune system going on and they have a severe headache, they just have a lot more medical complexity to keep in mind and it really broadens the differential diagnosis. So again, it's not that the patient has, for example, HIV, it's just that it's introducing a broader differential that could be a higher risk. So the last P is painkiller overuse. And I don't know, I, I don't, this is not necessarily a red flag, but I'm sure you are familiar with medication overuse headaches. So it's just one extra thing to kind of keep in mind that, you know, we just, we just want to be mindful of, but it's not necessarily, you need to send them to the ED right now. So of those Snoop 10s, who needs urgent evaluation? Pretty much there's a couple there's, we can kind of siphon it down a little bit more. So sudden thunderclap headaches where it's like a rapid onset, I know it's a difficult decision to make to send somebody to the ER, but most of the time, I mean, those patients need to go. Um, the other one is like a first or worst headache of their life. You really wanna tread cautiously. I've been in that uncomfortable situation of like, do I send them, do I not send them? You ha that, that is one potential area to consider. The deciding factor in those types of situations is typically their neurologic exam. So if you have any focal neurodeficits, 
those patients definitely need emergent care and imaging. The other context that you want to think about emergent care for, for patients are when they have things like if you're worried about a meningitis or encephalitis, they have a neck pain, they have systemic symptoms, especially with focal, focal neurologic deficits. Um, and if you also have any periorbital symptoms as well, like we just, we don't want to mess around in that area. And then the last thing is, is <laughs> this is a pretty rare one, but is there any possible carbon monoxide poisoning? Hopefully you've gotten that in your history in terms of the context of what's going on for their, for their evaluation, but those are for the most part the, the reasons that those patients would need emergency evaluation. So down below, I'm going to write a little list of all of the SNOOP acronyms. So you can just kind of copy and paste that and you can put that into your HPI. And then hopefully that will kind of help you trigger those types of questions. And hopefully in this video, I've kind of fleshed out that acronym a little bit more for context so that you can apply it more comfortably. Um, and again, you have to do your due diligence of like assessing the underlying reason for the headaches. But if you can incorporate or start incorporating um, that acronym in terms of your red flags, you can at least comfortably say, hey, we can take a pause, we can evaluate further, we can try some medications, we can do more assessment, we don't have to do anything emergent in terms of imaging or referrals or anything like that. So if you haven't grabbed the ultimate resource guide, head over to realworldnp.com slash guide. You'll get these episodes sent straight to your inbox every week with notes from me, patient stories and bonuses I really just don't share anywhere else. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll talk to you soon.